much first and foremost for inviting me it's great to have a conference like this we wouldn't have had a conference about public and patient involvement uh, e you know even even a year or two ago so uh, th that in itself is is fantastic progress uh, now how do you follow Mar Mary you know that's <laughs> uh, she's walked the walk I'm gonna talk the talk uh, so I'm afraid we're not quite at uh, at that uh, stage but as the Health Research Board, we have a very different role. We're a funder, so it's not about delivering a particular project. It is about how do we influence researchers and members of the public, but actually we primarily work with researchers and surely we have a role in, in um, bringing PPI more to the forefront of people's minds. Uh, so just to say, we, we are a funder on behalf of uh, the Department of Health. Uh, the, I'm going to talk to you briefly about uh, why we are doing this uh, and uh, why, why we are doing a survey uh, and what approach we took. Uh, I'm also going to just give you a couple of key messages that came out. This survey had two streams to it, one about uh, one aimed at researchers and another one aimed at members of the public uh, or patients and I'm going to give so, so just the, the key outcomes from those two arms and then a very brief look at what we're going to do about those outcomes. Um, Adele had already set the scene in terms of giving a definition of public and patient involvement and you know we're, we're very much on the same page there uh, although I think probably not everybody in the country is. Uh, the reason why we took this on at this stage was, well, in late last year, the HRB published a new strategy. And for the first time, a funding agency in Ireland has included a commitment to public and patient involvement in a strategy. So this is very clearly something that we want to do, a place we want to go to, and it's going to be a journey we need to figure out how to do it. Uh, we have put it both into our core principles there, uh, where we say that people are at the centre of health research and that over the next five years we will develop initiatives aimed at strengthening the involvement of the public and patients in health research in Ireland. We also have an action relating to that. That action is very high level because we really didn't know what to do. <laughs> and it was just a commitment to say, we will be doing something, and we're in the process of working th out what that is. Uh, it was, in a way, quite a happy match in as much the HRB had a piece of the strategy where you know, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I'm in the final year of completing a Master's of Business Studies, and I was looking for a research project. so. The two came together and uh, I've been spending a good bit of time on that, uh, probably a lot more than I could have if it was just work time, so it was, uh, you know, there's a lot of weekends in that. Uh, but it was probably a lot more comprehensive than it would have been otherwise as well. So I did look very much at international models uh, and just say that there are very different ways of going about public and patient involvement in different countries, cultural dependencies, um, environmental dependencies, synergies between different things. You can't just copy paste one initiative, one idea from a different country and try to plonk it into Ireland and think that it will work. I think we really have, you know, whilst you can get ideas and lots of learning from other countries, it's not necessarily a one to one relationship. And uh, then I was also trying to make sure. That I had sort of a grip on what's happening in Ireland in terms of supports for public and patient involvement. Um, I had the feeling that there was very little. Uh, that I think has been confirmed by, by asking <laughs> around. Uh, I did get back a number of projects that included public and patient involvement, and and that's brilliant. And I mean, uh, you know, there there clearly have been people who've like Mary uh, and, and others who will be speaking today, who have been doing this for quite some time, uh, but they've been doing it despite the system rather than because of the system, 
and because I thought it was the right thing to do rather than because of any particular supports or, or even nudges they might have been given. Uh, and all of that led then into the uh, survey that I designed and sort of had uh, thankfully a lot of input also in validating that from, from a variety of different sources uh, and that was really to inform the HRB what both partners, what researchers thought would be important and also what members of the public thought they might be interested in contributing because if you don't have both you know you have you have very little uh, chances so there are two arms in this they're separate questions uh, we put out the HRB uh, through HRB channels uh, the the information about this this will mainly have reached researchers because they're the people who subscribe to our uh, RSS feeds and you know, and, and those um, media, uh, we're very much aware that we are not reaching members of the public through HRB channels, so a number of charities very kindly agreed to put it out through their social media and, and to distribute it and disseminate it. Uh, that was absolutely fundamental uh, and the only way we could have hoped to, to reach members of the public. Uh, in terms of response, uh, I got 391 responses back uh, with kind of a decent split between the two, uh, which between the two groups. Uh, that was question one on the survey, are you a member of the public stroke patient or are you a researcher? Quite a straightforward question. Question two, and some of you may have participated and seen it, was long and difficult complicated. That was really at the heart of what I wanted to get to and that's where the break-offs were. You know, that's where people dropped out. out. So uh, in, in a way what, what remained were uh, 88 <coughs> members of the public who completed question two and 154 researchers who completed their question two. Um, and everybody who pretty much everybody who completed question two then completed the rest. So that was the, the barrier, but that was really the, you know, the, the one thing that I really, really needed. Um, because the HIV is, in a way, best positioned to influence researchers, and that's where a lot of our actions will be, I'll probably be talking more about the researcher arm of the survey, but you know, there's obviously clear uh, links and synergies with what what the members of the public will and can and are interested in contributing. Uh, so, question two, the famous question two, was about uh, what should the HRB do to encourage public and patient involvement in Ireland? Uh, distribute a hundred points, and then there was a little bit of uh, instruction around how to do that. And I'm going to walk you through them because uh, between all the different options, the options came from international models and from reading around the topic, uh, but there's a lot of them <laughs> and they're complicated. So first one was about awareness building, what PPI can offer to researchers. So showcasting examples, providing materials, events, those kind of things. Then it was about practical help. Uh, for researchers who want to include PPI in their research studies. So for example, a coordinator to, to help them with advising where PPI would benefit, uh, how to identify um, PPI contributors, and uh, how uh, what needs to be considered to make it successful for both. Opportunities for matchmaking between researchers and members of the public was a third option. Uh, and you can look at different ways of doing that. Emphasizing PPI in application and uh, throughout the award management was uh, another option. Have specific awards or award supplements for PPI, so specific funding. Uh, include public reviewers in the review of the PPI aspect of applications. Uh, and I said not the scientific uh, aspect uh, not the scientific methodology. I know, of course, it's uh, the, the PPI is part of the overall scientific methodology, but I wanted to avoid all misconceptions that we'd ask a uh, public participant to give any comments on sample size calculations or on the selection of a particular gene as a target. 
um, you know, sort of it's, it's obviously, it needs to be appropriate. Uh, provide training for public or patient representatives and to provide training for researchers or healthcare professionals. So they were eight options, 100 points to distribute between those. What came back in terms of ranking, and you could have taken some guesses there, I certainly did whilst I was waiting for the results coming in, uh, was a very clear preference for practical help. That was clearly the top ranked choice that researchers made uh, with an average of 29 points given. That you know, there was a feeling that you know, sort of, a, we really need somebody to, to to help us with getting to grips with this. Awareness raising was also important. Uh, then there are a number of uh, items that kind of I'm not going to argue where exactly they sit in the ranking because there's very little between them. Uh, but you know, sort of matchmaking, uh, funding, uh, and and those things sort of come up as well. Emphasising PPI in applications. That's something that HRB applicants would have seen over the last year or two. We started to include that question in 2014, and you know, having seen it, I think we've kind of, you know, the sky didn't fall in, and and researchers sort of maybe got their heads a little bit around it that that's not necessarily so scary. Uh, whereas the last one there, including a public reviewer. Uh, in the assessment of applications, that clearly is scary. Uh, so that was very clearly the, the least favourite. Um, however, um, I had had some notions about, oh, is, is it possible to get to some sort of a consensus around this? The answer is no. Uh, every single option had somebody giving it zero points and somebody else giving it at least 80 points and in most cases 100 points. So, you know, people do not agree. However, it also reflects the fact that this is not simple. It's not, there's not going to be one silver bullet that's going to solve it all. It will need a multi-factorial res uh, response to it. What really struck me was sort of a slight niggle in my head that uh, is there a danger that researchers are really looking for somebody to outsource the whole PPI to? That might just be my cynical view, but they didn't want training that much. So it, I don't know, maybe it just means that uh, they felt that you know, somebody else should be doing the training and you know, it shouldn't, the HIV shouldn't have a role in this. I don't know. It's just something that we would really want to mitigate against. Uh, it, if and when we're designing interventions. Um, I also asked about researchers' experience with, P with PPI in the past, and an amazing two-thirds said that they had some experience. Now, I think there's an issue about, A, it's a self-selected sample, so you, know, you put out a survey with PPI in the title and it might attract people who have an interest in PPI. Uh, and the other aspect might be that we don't all fully agree on the definition of what PPI is. So I, I do take that with uh, a little bit of caution. Uh, those who have, who, who claimed some previous experience, I asked about barriers they may have encountered. And really the big one was about finding PPI contributors. That was by far the biggest item. Uh, a little bit linked in some cases to the issue of gatekeepers. So not every researcher's experience of working with a charity, for example, was a happy one. So, you know, sort of something around uh, getting that relationship right or expectations right. Time was the other very big issue. And I think that's just something we have to acknowledge. It does take time. Uh, power and agendas were, were a concern, clarity of roles, funding, training, communication, but uh, to a lesser extent. Then I asked people, would they be interested in, inc asked researchers, would they be interested in including public and patient involvement in their, into their research in the future? And virtually everybody said yes, <laughs> uh, with the exception of one 
out of 148. <laughs> um, and, you know, sort of to varying degrees of, you know, if, if, if I get help or I'm, I'm doing this anyway. But I thought that was a very positive note. To move over to the main messages that came from the other arm, of, uh, from the um, survey of members of the public and patients, the big issue there, the main concern was about the identification of research questions. Really that trumped everything else and it reflects a bit what with literature from the UK where they've identified, you know, where, where they found a mismatch between priorities identified through James Lind Alliance priority setting groups, uh, which you may be uh, familiar with. They include a patient perspective as well as a clinician perspective into the setting of, of research priorities uh, and research that's actually going on, or trials in particular that are actually going on. So clearly that is a big issue. Um, people were mostly interested in participating in very practical aspects that relate to particular projects, but half of them were also willing to consider working with a research funder uh, in in the whole area of, of strengthening uh, PPI. So, you know, from our perspective, it's great that there are people out there who would potentially work with us. That was important <coughs> to establish as well. <coughs> if everybody had said, no, I don't want to do this, then we'd find ourselves in a much harder position. Uh, people were wary of tokenism, as were researchers, by the way. Uh, and we very much share that in the HRB. So I think we need to really think about implementation and really think about making it a journey where we bring along people rather than go in with a sledgehammer and just make it mandatory and you know then people just have to tick, to tick a box and be done. Um, most people were willing to spend some time on PPI activities, but the big barrier was but they didn't know how to link with researchers. And I suppose that is a, a quite a difficult uh, proposition for a member of the public to, to link to a researcher actively. Uh, I also asked what members of the public thought that the HRB should be doing. Now, maybe some people were more familiar with the HRB than others, but uh, I think sort of a, it was actually quite good reflection of what we can genuinely do in, in as much as it's about communication, awareness, linking public with researchers, uh, integration into our award processes, training, working with charities, financial support, and actually a very small proportion of priority setting. So this whole notion of, of uh, setting questions that people seem to have th seen that more aligned with researchers rather than the research funder. Um, there were a number of options that were free text and where I was looking for comments. And some of the comments I was wondering if we really all come from the same definition of, of PPI. So I've just pl pulled out two here. Uh, that was the, the researcher one was about barriers encountered uh, with regards to public and patient involvement. And the person says that uh, in case of more involved or invasive sample taking, patients can be unwilling to commit to additional non-essential procedures. Not sure that I would class that as PPI. Uh, and a member of the public said, I didn't feel involved in the trial I participated in. It, it's quite possible that that person was simply asked to participate in the trial and not to engage around the design. Uh, so, Next steps for us uh, are, um, well, I mean, I, I've been busy writing this up as a dissertation, but of course we also need to uh, put it into a more digestible format and a, and a snappier format uh, in terms of, of putting out the results. They need to go up on our website uh, and they should be accompanied by a plan for what the HIV is gonna do about it. And I think that plan has two different aspects to it. It has on the one side questions of things we fund or, or ways we fund uh, and uh, on the other hand it has a question of ways we work. 
and I think both of those will be important in, in driving uh, our approach to um, public and patient involvement. Uh, we're in early phases of coming up with those, uh, so I, I'm not quite in a position to you know, put it out here today and, and put it up for discussion, but the idea is very much that we put that out for discussion through, for example, the web page and um, you know, see what comes back and potentially amend where and if, if necessary. So that's where we're heading. It's a process, we're not finished, but uh, it's, we're, we're on a journey here and hopefully we're going together. Thank you.